Hello friends and welcome to the Tao of Goblin. We're going to talk about the mechanics of flow juggling today. In particular, the mechanics of working with light up props. So, initially you might think that working with some juggling balls that light up would be about the same as working with just, you know, lit up, regular, in the light juggling. I'm going to make the argument that it's not, and I'm going to show you some examples of why I think it's a very different mechanic from working in the light. Um, I actually think of it as being as mechanically different in a lot of ways as working with a differently shaped prop, say clubs. And I think there's a big difference between the lit up version and the in the dark with the props lit up. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. For one, you have to think about what your props are and how they work. You might want two light up balls that are the same color and one that's a different color. This creates a very specific aesthetic. You might, like me, prefer the ones that change colors. I like that because I'm going for a more mesmerizing appearance. I want people to get lost in my juggling, but that may not be what you're after. You may be after actually letting people follow more what you're doing. If you have only one ball that's a different color and two balls that are the same, you're going to have a much easier to follow sort of pattern set up. So there's lots of considerations that come into just picking the prop that you're going to use. So that's my setup for all of this. That's my, my initial hypothesis that there is in fact a big difference and depending on the props you use, the lighting conditions you're in, that your style could or even should change to reflect those decisions. There's not, I think, a better or worse way of doing this. I think each one has their advantages. And I think it's really more important to think about what you want to accomplish and what you want to do, and then actively try and accomplish that. And one of the best ways to do that is to, well, film yourself and see what it looks like from an audience perspective. Because when we're back here, behind our juggling balls, it's a very different experience that we have from the people watching us. And when you add lights into that mix, it's even more different because you're looking different places from where your audience is. And when you record yourself and watch, you'll see a lot of this stuff that you don't see when you're just here watching your patterns, focusing on what you're trying to do. Without further ado, I'm going to show you some tricks in the light, and then I'm going to turn the lights out and show them to you in the dark. And I'm going to talk to you about how they're different from my perspective and why I choose to use or not use certain tricks depending on the lighting I'm in and the kinds of props I'm using. I think this will be cool. Stick with me. We're going to start with a columns trick. So here we go. This is a columns trick. And I actually think that this trick looks really cool in the light. In particular, this. I think this is called Boston Barrage or something. Anyways, it's not really important. This trick, right? In the light, you get this sort of three-handed effect. It's really similar to like a Mills Mess sort of trick. There's a very particular aesthetic in the light. Now, I think Mills Mess looks really cool in the dark, actually, for different reasons, but I think this trick doesn't look particularly interesting for what I'm trying to accomplish. The reason being that when you can't see the hands, all of a sudden that trick doesn't have that same appeal, that same sort of thing happening. Here's another really basic variation that I think illustrates the point really well. My left hand's going to do a carry out of a reverse cascade throw. So reverse cascade throw, carry. I think this trick looks okay in the light, but I think it looks really cool in the dark. And I'll show you it here in just a minute and see what you think about it. So there's another example. Um, let's look at one kind of weird technical example. There's this, where I'm doing just a basic handoff, a zero if you will. In the middle and I think in the light that's a pretty cool trick in the dark I don't know that it translates so well let's talk about carries in general so you've got tricks like this really basic basically cheap entertainment right I'm just juggling with one hand and waggling between not so cool in the light but actually looks really good in the dark and that's true of a lot of these tricks like something like this so you've got like this figure eight sort of trick right it's kind of a variation on Rubenstein's revenge in the light it, it looks okay but it looks pretty phenomenal in the dark, I think, because the mechanic of the light up balls, you're dealing in streamers. And that's what I try and keep in mind when I think about juggling in the dark. Anytime you have a motion of a ball, 
it's going to create a streamer. Not like, you know, you kind of get a little bit of a streamer on the camera in particular when you waggle in the light, but it's a lot different in the dark. You have these long color streamers, so you have to think about the geometry of what you're creating. It creates a very different sort of look. Here's another trick that I think looks particularly cool in the dark, and I'll show you that one as well. So, the mechanic of having a light that is affecting an eye and causing fatigue on the eye causes a difference in the way that I think you should approach juggling when you're dealing with this prop in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights out now. I'm going to turn these ones on. Turn these ones out. I'm going to show you a couple of these. And maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. And there's also, there's a light in here still. So you can see me a little better. And it's worth noting that depending on how much light is in a room, different tricks might look cooler or less cool. In this case, I'm going to show you this one first, right? We talked about this, this separated columns with the crossing hands. You can see my hands well enough that maybe this works for that three hands illusion. Maybe it doesn't. It depends on the environment. Let's look at another one I showed you. Here's the carry from the reverse cascade. And you can see the streamer gets really intense here. I think that makes this trick look really cool. And while we're talking about carries, let's look at some carries like this, right? All of these carries, I think, look way cooler in the dark. It's also worth noting that how you hold your hand will change the appearance of the trick. So what I'm doing here is this one, that was open, so my hand is this way. If my hand is facing you, you get a different look than this, right? This, not the same as this. That's another thing that is really subtle, but in juggling light up balls, all of a sudden that thing that would be really subtle in the light becomes a lot less subtle. That versus that. You can see the light still because it's bright enough, but I think you get a very different look depending on how you're holding your hand. So there's a lot to think about here, and I'm constantly learning about this thing, and I hope you'll think more about it too if you want to juggle these sorts of props, but I don't think it's the same thing. I think we can really think about and optimize the kinds of tricks we do, and I try to. I use a lot of carries and a lot of these sorts of steels and stuff to create these longer streamers because I think that's valuable in this sort of an environment. Let me turn the lights back on here real quick. So I think there's a lot of room, a lot of growth to be had in this area, and I'm growing all the time watching myself, trying to improve, get better, and figure out what works in the environment that I choose to generally juggle in. And I'd encourage you to think about the same thing. And even if you don't juggle in the dark with light up props, I think there's a lot of room to think about what your prop is and how you can use it more effectively. Back crosses are cool and all, but I think clubs, rings, they each have their own properties. I think the more we can exploit those properties to make cool effects and use them to their full potential, the cooler our juggling will be. This has been the Tao of Goblin. We talked about mechanics of flow and the mechanics of juggling light up props. I hope you'll come hang out with me again soon. And if you want to talk more about this stuff, tap that subscribe button. I think it's right there. You should tap that. It's good. You'll see more of me. I hope you have a good one.